Charlotte Tilbury. Hey guys, it's a little weird to only see me once a week. I didn't remember to make it formal in my last video, but I am dropping down to once a week and my videos are gonna be on Fridays. It's not sustainable for me to film and edit twice a week. Editing takes so long and I'm already really limited with my health and I have other things to do. Well, I just noticed this bowl here. Oops. Today, we're gonna discuss my 2020 favorites. I know I'm pretty late, but life happens. I have it uh, divided by like category. So starting with TV shows, do I even, I took notes and then forgot to bring my iPad in here. I'm clearly unprepared. I was unprepared for a lot of this actually. Okay, while I was doing that, let's skip TV. Uh, let's start with tech. So the first thing that I really found a love for in 2020 was YouTube. Not just being on YouTube, but watching YouTube. I watched so much YouTube last year, hours and hours of it. And I love every minute of it. I love watching things that aren't just scripted TV shows. I like seeing small creators, large creators, just unique things that I won't find anywhere else. I've watched cooking videos. I've learned uh, chopping tricks for food. I have learned, I'm in the process of learning new makeup skills, I'm um, music, podcasts. I do like listening to podcasts, but it's really fun when they film it too. Just, it's a little more exciting. And the next thing I loved, TikTok. I stayed up way too late. I'm downloading Excel on my phone. Um, I stayed up way too late, way too many nights watching TikTok. I love it. They're short and sweet. They're funny. I love that the algorithm actually works. So I'm seeing things that are actually interesting to me, whether it's life tips, makeup, plus size clothing, um, history, mostly comedy. I love the comedy, the dancing videos of adults, not children. Next thing is eBooks. I actually used to hate eBooks like with the passion but since the library was closed and I when it reopened I didn't really feel safe like borrowing physical books I don't know it just made me uncomfortable so I've just been borrowing a lot of ebooks from the library and it's actually so handy I I don't have to worry about holding a book open it's a lot easier on my wrists to hold a tablet I don't like to read on my phone the screen is too small and it kind of strains my eyes which brings me to the next thing uh, an iPad or a tablet in general I have an iPad I got it for my birthday last year from my mom and my brother I use it mostly for reading but I also use it for recipes on Pinterest and, and things like that. I really like to watch YouTube on it in bed. It really comes in handy for the ebooks. It's great for the Kindle app. I really like having it. I don't use social media on it at all. I don't use the camera or anything. I probably could have just gotten like an e-reader but it was on a really good sale and there's an app on the iPad that I really like called maybe the Color Me Happy, I think. And it's just like a coloring app, like you color by numbers, and it's really relaxing. So I liked having the iPad to be multifunctional, where like a Kindle just for reading, I couldn't get that on. Uh, the next thing is my Fitbit. So I have a heart condition to where my heart rate is elevated. And I also have chronic fatigue syndrome, so when I do any kind of exercise, I get a flare and extremely fatigued and spend days in bed. But I found through pacing and keeping my heart rate under a certain number, I can actually do physical activity within reason with a lot of breaks. So I like to keep my heart rate under 110. If it goes over 110, I find that I get what they call PEM, post -ex external malaise. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's extreme debilitating fatigue after exercise. So if my heart rate goes up at all, I have to stop what I'm doing and rest until it comes all the way back down to my resting heart rate. I can't just exercise. It's like I do one or two minutes of a thing and then I wait for it to come next. It's something that's 
difficult even with yard work or chores or whatever I have to keep my heart rate in that range or I can spend days or weeks in bed recovering from an activity. I'll dive into that in a later a chronic illness video but the Fitbit is great for tracking my heart rate. I don't pay much attention to the steps because my body needs different things every day. Some days I can't get more than a hundred steps and other days I can get a lot more but it's really great for tracking my heart rate and keeping myself in the pacing requirements. Now we can go to TV. So I'm gonna, I wrote what the shows are about in case you don't know. The first show that I loved was Haunting of Hill House. Um, it is a horror show and it says, flashing between past and present, a, fa a fractured family confronts haunting memories of their <coughs> old home and the terrifying events that drove them from it. I loved the show. This show was phenomenal. The acting, was phenomenal, the scenery phenomenal, the filming phenomenal, the, the coloring of it. It was some of the most exceptional film that I've ever seen in my life and I highly recommend it. It didn't really have that many jump scares, maybe like one or two, and they were so tastefully done that I didn't mind them because they worked. It wasn't excessive and the story, the writing, the everything, this was just like a cinematic masterpiece in my opinion which goes into the next one on my list which is haunting a blind manor all of those things i said the same thing and it is also just tragic in a beautiful way haunting a blind manor is a drama more so than a horror i don't know maybe there was like one jump scare in it dead doesn't mean gone an all pair plunges into an abyss of chilling secrets in this gothic romance it is a drama it is a romance there's multiple romances in it. It's everything I said about Haunting the Hill House. I can't wait for the third season because if they just keep on this trajectory, it's going to be chef's kiss. Next, Schitt's Creek. Finally started watching Schitt's Creek and I wish I wouldn't have waited so long. It is, it is hilarious. I think David would be my best friend in real life. Schitt's Creek is obviously a sitcom. Suddenly broke the formerly Filthy rich Rose family is reduced to living in a ramshackle motel in a town they once bought as a joke. Shit's great. It's, it's great. It's actually also like cute, not just funny, um, it's sweet. I, I just overall like it. It's a good sitcom. Next is an oldie, but I never really had access to watching it before, but early in lockdown, HBO gave like a month free to like everyone. You could just like watch HBO stuff if you had Hulu. And uh, I thought it was a great time to binge watch The Sopranos. So that's what I did the month of April. And if you don't know what The Sopranos is about, it's a crime drama. It follows James G Gandolfini as Tony Soprano, husband, father, and mob boss who pro whose professional and private strains land him in the office of his therapist. That show was also brilliant. Like, it's obviously old, but the way it was filmed uh, it's still so satisfying. You're not looking at how dated it is. The story isn't dated. It could happen now. Like, it doesn't focus a lot on, like, the time period it was filmed. It's, the acting is good, the story is good, and I know it has a controversial ending, but it was, like, amazing. The way it made you feel things, it was just really good. I ended up buying, I didn't know that I would finish it before Hulu took it off, and I did end up finishing it, but there was a sale on the DVDs or the Blu-rays, I don't remember, and I ended up buying it because it was just that good. Uh, the next one I watched a lot of was The Real Housewives, specifically um, The Real Housewives of New Jersey, which was my favorite. I've watched some of the other ones, like uh, New York, and they're entertaining as well, but something about New Jersey, I don't know, it's just messy. I really enjoy it. It's just reality TV, what do I have my nose? Reality TV following rich women and their pointless drama. And it is completely pointless, but if you like that kind of stuff, like any of the seasons, but especially New Jersey. And finally in TV is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. This is based around the comics of Sabrina. I loved Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the cartoon, and the one with Melissa Joan Hart. But I was excited about this because it was more of a creepy feel. Um, it is considered a supernatural horror drama. Magic and mischief collide as half human, half witch Sabrina navigates between two worlds. Mortal teen life and her family's legacy, the Church of Night. 
it's good. I love it. It's creepy. It's a good storyline. It really keeps your attention. It, it's funny. It's cute. It's dark. It is overall a really, really great show. I'm not finished watching the series yet. I think I still have season three and the season that just came out recently. I need to finish that up. I started a new show yesterday. I don't know why I keep starting new shows before finishing shows. Anyway, moving on. Let's touch briefly on music. There's only two things here. I've just rediscovered, discovered my love for Led Zeppelin. That's basically what I listened to for 70% of the year in 2020. Led Zeppelin, constantly. And if I wasn't listening to Led Zeppelin, it was just regular, it was just regular classic rock. Now everyone has different definitions of what classic rock is, so I don't know if uh, you would agree with me that it was classic rock, but it was my version of classic rock. I have beauty on this page but it's kind of long so let me just do like drinks real quick. This one, I have one can left that I've been kind of like savoring for a good moment. It's the Dr. Pepper Cream Soda. For me I drink the Diet Dr. Pepper Cream Soda and it has been really hard to find. I know they made it permanent but with can shortage or aluminum shortages I know that sometimes you can't like find everything. They do have regular Dr. Pepper cream soda. I might grab some of that just to have it. It's great. I know I could just mix two sodas together and get it. You know, cream soda and then Dr. Pepper. But I don't know. It's nice just having it in one can. It's nice, refreshing. Um, Tim Hortons coffee. So in 2020, I discovered that Dunkin' Donuts coffee is very acidic and hurts my stomach. Starbucks coffee is acidic and hurts my stomach. Tim Hortons coffee does not. So I buy the little pods of Tim Hortons. It's a very smooth coffee and it doesn't give me a stomach ache. Moving on to what replaced my Starbucks cold brew is a uh, stock cold brew. I get the not so sweet and it's so good. It doesn't upset my stomach at all. It has an amazing taste. I highly recommend any of the stock I think I'm saying that right. Stock, stoke, I don't know. But uh, try that if you're interested in cold brew. It's great. Now we'll get to beauty. I have the stuff here I can uh, show you. First on the list is the Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know why I turned into an old British person. Charlotte Tilbury. Hollywood Flawless Filter. I think that's it. Uh, Hollywood Flawless Filter for Superstar Youth Glow. I swear this used to be like a longer name. So, I don't really know what this is. I think it's like a skin illuminator. I, I'm not quite sure, but it's magical. I don't have it on today because it is 11.13 p.m. And I'm just going to be washing this right off my face when I'm done. But it gives you this nice, just like healthy summer glow. Like, you're not sweaty, but you're just like a day at the beach and you're, you're like a Greek goddess. That's what this does. And uh, it's astronomically priced. I think it's like $48, $38, I don't know. But you don't need very much. So I could see this lasting a while. But uh, I got a free sample of it with an order and it was so good that I had to order it with my 15% off during the VIB sale. Next we have this. It is the Holiday perfume from Jo Malone this year. I don't know if it's the same one every year. This is the Orange Bitters Cologne. And I almost, not even almost, I literally never buy perfume without smelling it first. But I haven't met a Jo Malone scent that I don't enjoy. So I decided to just give it a shot. And worst case scenario, I could have returned it if necessary. But it, it's actually really great. I'm a little worried that this aggravated my asthma really bad. So I guess we'll see. So I had a pulmonologist tell me I didn't have pneumonia, but someone else told me I did have pneumonia. Maybe I got pneumonia because my asthma was flared. Maybe my asthma was flared by scents, and the only scent I had been wearing recently was this one. So I will be very devastated if I can't wear it anymore. It smells like like, I can just Google what it smells like. It's supposed to be like citrus and like, I, I don't know, but it smells just so it, like warm, cozy winter, holiday. I want to see what like the notes actually say. Fragrance family, warm and spicy, scent type, warm and sweet, gourmands, gourmands, I don't know. I can't pronounce things. 
Uh, key notes, sweet orange, bitter orange, sandalwood. So it's said to smell like the cocktail, but I've never had the cocktail, so I can't tell you if that is true. But I, I really love this. If you like deep, warm scents, you might like this. You could still get your hands on it online. Ah, third on the list is this guy. This is the Dyson hair dryer. Um, this was a Christmas gift, which I'm super excited about. I have very fine, thin hair. Like, uh, if I put my hair in a ponytail, this is it. That's all of it. It's not very much. It's also just super fragile because of my thyroid condition. So, I like to do what I can to limit the damage. Uh, I don't wash it very frequently, but I do have to blow dry it to keep it from getting dirty faster. If I let my hair air dry, it gets greasy. My hair gets greasy like very quickly, so I like to just blow dry the roots and then it keeps me... Hello doodle. It keeps me good for a few days. My thing is like I did my research for a couple years to see if this was even worth the money and the consensus was that it is much less damaging for your hair. I actually have it on the lowest speed and the lowest heat and it dries my hair in half the time on my normal blow dryer. It prevents frizz. Like this is hair that I have slept on for at least a day. I don't remember when I washed my hair last. And like I barely have any little flyaways or anything because of this guy. Anyway, like this doesn't hurt my arm because it's not weighted here like a traditional hair dryer. It's all in the weight. So it's very good for my disabilities. Next, my tried and true NYX glitter primer. I'm wearing it right now. Um I, unless I'm wearing, and honestly, even if I am wearing just a matte on my lid, this makes it more pigmented and stick better and helps prevent the creasing for me. So, oh wow, it says six months I've had this like a year. Anyway, this is only like four bucks, but it, it makes your eyeshadow game like A++++. So I highly recommend this. I will always recommend it. It will always be a favorite. All of the... Fenty Gloss Bombs. This is excellent gloss. It has a smell that's kind of like chemical fruit. It reminds me of probably some kind of like lip smackers, which I really enjoy. I love that it's not sticky. It has good staying power. It comes in great shades. I bought the little sampler at Christmas last year to get all the colors. And I love it. I can throw it over anything that I want to be a gloss. This little guy, this is just a travel size, but this is the Benefit Gimme Brow. When I don't want to use a pomade or anything, I just want to do a simple makeup look, or maybe I don't even want to wear makeup at all that day, I just want to fill in my brows, just comb this through. I will comb this through even over, like I'm wearing pomade today. And uh, it has a little bit of color, but it adds some hold. I'm not wearing it today, but that's probably why this eyebrow looks like. My right eyebrow is my sad eyebrow never does what I want it to. This I will be buying in the full size because I like it a lot. I got the Precisely My Brow Pencil and it's nice but it's not really spectacular so I don't know that I'll spend that much on a uh, brow pencil again. I'll probably just get like a cheapo one as long as I can find it in black. Let's move on to the Color FX Blush Duos. I started with just the one I really wanted, which was like a peach shade, but I ended up getting all the ones that would work on my skin when they were 50% off at Ulta the second time. I missed out on them on the first time, and oh, I'm really glad. I love them. I'm wearing uh, Mojave Mauve right now. They're amazing blushes, very pigmented. They'll last me probably for the rest of my life. I'll never have to buy another blush. I will probably buy another blush, but um, I won't have to. Uh, the other things I forgot to bring in here, so we're not going to see them. The Ordinary Peeling Solution. I tried this because I heard it was a dupe for Drunk Elephant Baby Facial, and Drunk Elephant Baby Facial is $80 a bottle. I'm not joking, $80 a bottle. And I was willing to see if it worked just as well because 
The peeling solution I think is like 13. Well, it does work just as well as baby facial and I actually like it a little better because I can see where I already applied it. Uh, baby facial is like skin color so you can't really see. Where this is red and very easy to see. I also don't have to leave it on as long as baby facial which I appreciate. The Ordinary Marula Oil, I wanted to see. It was the same ingredient as the Drunk Elephant one but it's like seven dollars instead of seventy two dollars and as far as I can tell it works just as well my skin is in really bad condition this year for two reasons one COVID depression I just stopped taking care of my skin for half the year and then two I was on a bunch of steroids and then three like last week I had PMS so I just got a bunch of breakouts like this area in here you can see all of my acne there cute so it does work as far as I can tell and finally in this section oh keeps working hands I'm not really washing my hands any more than I used to like I washed my hands frequently before but I'm using hand sanitizer a lot more after I touch like before I get out of the car and when I touch anything outside of the car if I have to go somewhere so hand sanitizing a lot when I'm physically going to a place, which I, I never did before. The only extra time I'm washing my hands, I would say, is when I get home, because hand sanitizer is only like a temporary replacement for hand washing. So when I get home from shopping, I properly wash my hands. But the hand sanitizer is a hundred times more than I ever did, and my hands have been angry and dry. So I got the O'Keefe's Working Hands just to try. I don't like things that feel greasy or I can't use my phone or anything. And this soaks in really fast and it doesn't leave that greasy feeling. So I definitely recommend that. It's not cute. It doesn't have any kind of smell, but it works. Okay, and the last two sections. Clothes. Uh, first is the North Face Osito Jacket. It's just like the really fuzzy one that you see a lot of people wearing. I actually was lucky enough to get this on a really good sale at Dick's in the spring because they were trying to clear out stock that didn't sell so I got like $30 off. It's like a Black Friday sale. I bought it a size bigger than uh, my actual size because I wanted to be able to wear it as a light jacket over a hoodie. So I got it in a size large enough that I can wear a hoodie under it and still zip it up and it's comfortable. I can and do still wear it like by itself but if I need that extra layer but it's still not too warm for like a full winter jacket I like being able to layer that. I also like that it's really soft but you can tell with time the softness is gonna go away. I can already tell in like the elbows where I've like leaned on a armrest or something that it, it's a lot less soft there than it is in other places. These two kind of go together. The Old Navy Thermals and Joggers. I put them together because the Old Navy Thermals, which are pajamas, have jogger ankles and I love that. I love the jogger ankles. I got a couple pairs of jogger pants, like sweatpants, and they're my favorite. I'm obsessed. Uh, they're super comfortable. I like they don't drag on the ground like my yoga pants. I plan on getting some more this year because I only have, I only have one pair. I want more joggers because they're so comfortable. And I'll get rid of my yoga pants because like those are so gross at the bottom from dragging. And that's the other thing like with COVID, you don't want your pants dragging on the ground. Uh, the next one, Adidas sports bras. So I am large chested, unfortunately. And that means the bras are super uncomfortable because the band has to be so tight to hold everything up. It actually started to leave like some scars. And again, my band fits properly. I've been measured by like a professional bra fitter. It's just when you are large chested to actually get support, it doesn't come from straps. It comes from the band. So the band has to be tight and they have to be underwire. So it sucks. I have switched to like when I'm just around the house, I'm just wearing like the fabric sports bras that offer no support but they give me like a little bit of compression and a barrier so like I'm not attracting creepy male attention if it's cold outside. I really like the Adidas ones. I found one at TJ Maxx and it, they were sold out because they were on a sale but I plan on ordering a couple more. 
I have like these two Target ones, which I would just have bought more of these, but they don't make them anymore. They all have like the fitted cup. I can't find any like that have a molded cup that I fit in. So I need the ones that are just a plain piece of fabric, almost like a bralette in a sense. The Adidas ones are very comfortable and they're just like very sturdy. Next two things, the last two things are shoes. One is Ugg slippers. I got those as a gift last Christmas. It was the only thing I really wanted and definitely well worth the purchase. I get very, very cold feet because I have a disorder where the blood pools out of my hands and my feet so they go numb and get cold very easily and the sheepskin keeps them warm. I know not everyone wants sheepskin stuff so maybe the Ugg slippers aren't for you but if you want something high quality that is truly warm those slippers they're just any of their slippers i have like the scuffette they're just like the 85 dollar ones i think just they're really thin because i don't need to wear them outside or anything they're truly just house shoes and then the last thing in clothes is crocs you guys got crocs multiple years ago but I only wore them in 2020 because they're super easy to sanitize. They're just like little rubber things that are just spray with Lysol. Really nice, but they're also really comfortable. I like just having slip-on shoes that don't have backs. They're great yard shoes. They're great shoes if you just want something on inside your house, like so house shoes. Watch for their sales because uh, when I got mine, it was like buy one, get one 70% off. And finally, let's talk about what I read. I'm not going to list everything I read because I read like 25 books. I'm going to read the favorite books of those books that I read. And the first one, oh, I should say, they're literally all horror or thriller. So um, just heads up there. First book is called The Silent Patient. I'm going to insert pictures of the covers. I don't know how to pronounce anyone's name. So you'll see the author's name on the cover here. So The Silent Patient is a psychological thriller of a woman's act of violence against her husband and of the therapist obsessed with uncovering her motive. I really liked this book. It wasn't, it wasn't anything like fancy. It wasn't incredibly shocking or anything like that, but it was just interesting and well-written and I truly enjoyed it. The next one is um, The Outsider by Stephen King. Uh, Stephen King is my favorite horror author. I know a lot of people like don't like him, but there are two books of his on here. I read a lot of Stephen King, so it's it can't really be a surprise, especially if you watched like my favorite horror movies. I think like multiple of his were in there. And that's The Outsider. A horrifying crime, watertight evidence points to a single suspect except he was 70 miles away with an ironclad alibi. Detective Anderson sets out to investigate the impossible. How can the suspect have been in both at the scene of the crime and in another town? It, that was good. That one, I did not, like, I had no idea what was coming. It was great, it kept my attention. I think I read it in like two days. I actually bought it because I liked it so much. The next one is A Head Full of Ghosts. The lives of the Barretts, a suburban New England family, are torn apart when 14 year old Ma Marjorie begins to display signs of acute schizophrenia. To her parents' despair, the doctors are unable to halt Ma Marjorie's majory. Marjorie. Marjorie's descent into madness. As their stable home devolves into a house of horrors, they reluctantly turn to a local Catholic priest for help and soon find themselves the unwitting stars of The Possession, a hit re reality TV show. This book was so interesting because you truly don't know. Was she schizophrenic or was she possessed? Even at the end of the book, you have no idea. You think you know, but nobody ever tells you. And I liked that. I liked there were no answers. It was kind of just like, you get to decide. I thought it was interesting. It was a nice change of pace, different than other books I had read. And uh, 10 out of 10. The next book, If It Bleeds, another Stephen King book, it's just uh, a collection of four uniquely wonderful long stories, including a standalone sequel to the number one bestseller, The Outsider. So if you want to read If It Bleeds, I suggest reading The Outsider first or um, you'll be a little lost by that one. It does uh, summarize some of it, so if you hadn't read it, I think you could still read that one. But uh, it was good. All four stories were good. I remember the the sequel to The Outsider and the very first story being my favorite. This one, I think, was my number one favorite of the year. I just like devoured it. It's the Sundown Motel. Something hasn't been right at the roadside Sundown Motel for a very long time, and Carly Kirk is about to find out why in this chilling new novel. Upstate New York, 1982. Viv Delaney <coughs> wants to move to New York City. 
and to help pay for it, she takes a job as a night clerk at the Sundown Motel in Fell, New York. But something isn't right at the motel. Something haunting and scary. Upstate New York, 2017. Carly Kirk has never been able to let go of the story of her Aunt Viv, who mysteriously disappeared from the Sundown Motel before she was born. She decides to move to Fell and visit the motel, where she quickly learns that nothing has changed since 1982. And she soon, soon finds herself ensnared in the same, I am really bad at pronouncing words, the same mysteries that claimed <coughs> her aunt. This was like, it was everything that I could want in a book. It was mystery, it was creepy, it was a bunch of stuff I'm not gonna give away, but I loved it. And it's definitely the number one book for me of the year. And it was one that I read literally in December. <laughs> and the last book, is The Girl on the Train. This is the first book I read of 2020 and I actually listened to it on ebook. It took me about a week because I would only listen to it while I was like cleaning or doing my makeup or something. <clears throat> Rachel catches the same commuter train every morning. She knows it will wait at the same signal each time, overlooking a row of back gardens. She's even started to feel like she knows the people who live in one of those houses. Jess and Jason, she calls them. Their life, as she sees it, is perfect. If only Rachel could be happy. And then she sees something shocking. It's only a minute until the train moves on, but it's enough. Now everything's changed. Now Rachel has a chance to become a part of the lives she's only watched from afar. Now they'll see, she's much more than just a girl on the train. This book was my number two for the year. And there are a lot of twists in it. It's a lot of back and forth. Like, who did it? Who did the bad thing? Who's the bad guy? And uh, it's interesting because everyone in the story is a horrible person. So um, it it actually keeps you guessing because you're just like, I don't know which asshole did it. You're all assholes. And I, I like that. I like when there's not a clear cut good and bad guy. I... I really like stories where everyone is bad because sometimes that's just really realistic to life. Everyone's a piece of shit. Uh, so I highly recommend that. If if you're interested in two books that are more thriller than like horror, like Stephen King is horror, but uh, The Sun Down Motel and The Girl on the Train are just thriller books. Uh, the Girl on the Train is even more, like, they're both kind of like mystery too. There's nothing scary about them. And my top two books of the year, absolutely. Okay, well this was very long-winded. I'm hoping to not have it too long. Uh, sorry, editing Sam. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already, please consider subscribing. I post videos every Friday. Please also give this video a thumbs up. I'm so happy <laughs> they watched this video and I'm clearly stumbling over my words. Uh, I'll see you guys next week.